I never really set out to be a serial bank robber or to be, you know, a professional criminal or anything like that. Um, I had a really good upraising. Um, I had a mother who was very involved. I grew up in a pretty religious household. Um, so I always had a pretty strict hand, you know, making sure that I was doing the right thing. I didn't attend high school. Um, I switched to homeschool when I was, I think, about 10 or 11. And when we moved to Arkansas, uh, my mother gave me the option of continuing with homeschooling or going to public school. I said, yeah, I'm going to homeschool. And actually, from that point on, I never really cracked open a book again. And I never really uh, finished any schooling after that. So I think I had maybe like a sixth or seventh grade education. I'd always worked since I was 14. I had a full-time job from then on. But I got to the point where I was working at low-paying jobs and I didn't really see any kind of long-term outcome. So I decided that I wanted to go to school and I decided on a tech school. So I went and I got my GED at that point and I moved back to Chicago and I took a two-year tech school in a mechanical program. And after that, I got a job as an industrial mechanic. I actually worked on forklifts. As an adult though, when I turned about 20, 21, and I got hurt at work. Um, I got my ankle crushed by a forklift. And so I was off work recovering from the injury for quite a while. And when I got back to work and I was cleared to go back, I was promptly laid off by my company right away. Um, I kind of felt like a failure, like I wasn't able to provide for my family. I was relying on other people. I had bills, all of my bills were going unpaid. And it got to the point where I came home one day and there was actually a letter on my front door that I was about to be evicted from my home. I actually just, without any planning, I got in my car, I drove to a sporting goods store, I bought a hat and some sunglasses, and uh, I wrote, wrote a note out on a piece of paper and I just drove north to the next state up and I robbed a bank. I was, I was very, very afraid to get caught for the beginning. Um, the first time I robbed a bank, I actually threw up out the window of my car before going in. It was a very nerve-wracking experience. And, the second and third times as well. It were very, very nerve-wracking experiences, but it gradually got easier and easier. By the time I got caught, it was there was no emotional attachment to it whatsoever. It was like going into work. When I got caught, I was actually driving away from a bank, and when they turned their lights on and I was completely surrounded, even, yeah, I felt my heart sink into my stomach, and I really felt like, okay, my life is over at this point. So. I served a grand total of just over five years. It, it was really difficult for me. It, it didn't take me long in prison to really regret everything that I had done and to really realize what I wanted to do moving forward. So right away when I got out, I started looking at what I could do you know, to get myself back on the right path. I had expected to face a lot of difficulties because of the fact that I was now a felon. I was an ex-con. I had all these horrible crimes on my background that everyone would see. I thought I was prepared for it, but I really wasn't. The first 10, 15, 20 places that I went to looking for work on getting out, the response that I received was pretty severe. I literally had people telling me to get out of the office or they would call the police. And I was there dressed up in a suit and tie to apply for a job once I revealed what my conviction was for. And these are people that had said they were felon friendly, that encouraged me to come in knowing that I was living in a halfway house. And everybody looked at me like I was the worst person on earth. So what brought me to Goodwill was at the halfway house that I was staying, there were some people from Goodwill's reentry department. And I remember uh, Rick Watson, the manager of the reentry program. He said, if you want a career, if you want to have a job where you can be where you want to be years down the road, and you want to find a company that won't judge you on your past, but judge you based on what you can do with the person you are today, he said, come through the TEO program. That's what we're all about. And that really hit me right in the heart. And that was when I knew, okay, this is where I want to go. I want to give this a chance. I want to give this a try. I had uh, been offered a position working in career services a few weeks before graduation. And I knew that that was an opportunity that I would really appreciate, a job that I would really enjoy because um, firsthand experiencing the, the mission of Goodwill, you know, being a person to benefit from the things that they did, I knew that I would be happy every day at work if I was able to return that and do that same thing for other people. It wasn't just the training programs that turned me on to Goodwill. It wasn't just um, all the learning opportunities that I had that made it worthwhile to me. It was the attitude that every individual had when there was something that I needed. And when I first got out, there was a lot that I needed. I didn't have a dollar to my name. I had about three changes of clothes. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have a driver's license. 
didn't have a bank account, and it was the people at Goodwill that helped me to achieve all of those things. A lot of the people here, they don't realize the effect that they have on all the, the mission trainees, all the people here that are receiving services. Every single person at Goodwill that treats them with respect and dignity is providing an amazing service.